All right, there we go. Hi everyone, how's it going? Team here, and this is another episode of BXJS, a show about building things with JavaScript. And today we're doing another proposal from you guys. Uh, this one is going to be about organizing large JavaScript code bases, as you can see on the screen. So this was the top highest voted proposal this week. And uh, this is what we're going to be talking about. Um, hey, Finitivi, how's it going? See you in the chat there. Thank you for joining as always. Uh, really happy to see you guys as well. So we are going to be doing the code organization. And uh, to tell you the truth, I don't really have any best practices per se, but I do have a few things that I want to talk about basically. So I went ahead and created a folder for us because I think it's always better to show it an example. So we're going to go over here and we're going to fire up the VS code. And uh, while I'm basically writing the code, I'm going to talk about the way that I typically do that as you know, as usual in those videos. So it's not really about um, the best practices that are objectively best because there is no such thing, but it's more about the way I typically do that and the way that I approach problems like this, right? So I'm just gonna do npm init minus y. I don't know if I'm even gonna be trying to make the project run, but uh, we're gonna, I'm gonna have it regardless or whatever. So um, in my opinion, organizing the JavaScript code bases is just a more complex version of general, um, problem in, in software development that is called managing complexity, right? Because this is what you generally do with your projects. You try to keep the complexity um, simple enough to allow you to solve the task. And then um, how would I phrase that correctly? So you try to keep the complexity uh, at the level that basically allows you to solve the problem that you're facing without overcomplicating your code, right? There's, there's, there's always this golden, uh, golden middle, uh, middle ground for, uh, for your approach. And, you know, if you make it overly complex and overly ge general, uh, for example, uh, make something that, you know, can solve 25 problems at once when you only need to solve one, that usually means that your code base will be huge. You will have a lot of abstractions, for example, and, whenever the new people come in, they will suffer trying to untangle all of that, right? And this like suffering is not a metaphor here, believe me. <laughs> so um, the thing here is, yes, is basically about managing complexity within your project, not just your code base, not just your um, some project, but any project and any, I would say actually any file and any function you write. So um, the way I'm gonna be talking about it is that I'm gonna, create an um, example app and start expanding it, right? So in my opinion, it's almost never a good idea to start with the structure of the project right away because uh, since, I mean, software development is a creative process, right? So you, a lot of people don't really agree that it's creative process, but it really is because you almost never know for sure how exactly you will tackle and solve the specific problem. So this is this is where the creativity comes in, right? And um, this is why I think it is not very good to start with a predefined structure. So there's, of course, there are like, you know, existing patterns that people use, MVC, uh, MVVM, whatever else, like, you know, there's a bunch of them and they might work, but they actually force you into boundaries that might not work for your specific project. So what I actually typically do when I start is I create a project and just start coding, right? Just one file nothing else, just start very simple, start very basic and expand from there. So this is what we're going to do. We're going to go for, um, no, you know what? We're not going to go. We're going to go for Fastify because there has some additional plugins that are kind of tricky to set up. So we're going to tackle that as well. Uh, so I'm going to do npm install or I guess yarn install Fastify in this case, whatever, or not Fastify. I'm going to copy this bit, right? So we, uh, whoops, I'm going to have index.js here, right? And we have our server. So this is your initial code. It is very easy to understand. It is, you know, 11 lines, 13 lines of code. Um, I don't know why I said 11, but it's 13, line of, uh, 13 lines of code. And when you open that file, you can easily say what's going on here, um, assuming you're familiar with Fastify framework, right? So this is, this is not complex by any means. This is very simple. Uh, now we're gonna start um expanding it so there is a question from chat what exactly are large um, javascript code bases so 
I would say that the size of the code base actually doesn't really matter that much. I mean, the only problems that you start encountering when having um, huge, no, uh, yeah, sorry, when you start encountering huge uh, code bases is that you have, you need tooling that is fast, right? Like the test runners have to be fast because you can have like thousands of tests. The linting tools have to be fast because you have like thousands of files to lint and so on and so forth. Uh, from my perspective, there is no real difference between a code base with like a few hundred of files and a few thousand of files, because if you structure it correctly, it will be easy to go through. If you structure it poorly, you can, well, make the even small code base really, really painful to go through, right? So uh, in my opinion, well, large, I don't know, thousand files, I guess, maybe, maybe more. But I, I, this is absolutely arbitrary in my opinion, so I don't, I don't think it's worth, you know, focusing on this discussion. Let's continue. So we created this very basic um, server. Now let's say we want to add authentication, right? So we go to Fastify Oath, which is the module for authentication here. And we say, okay, we're gonna add that right now, right? So we're gonna add this, and then we're gonna copy these decorations here. Um, we're gonna, I'm just gonna write it in a separate lines so that we actually have a sort of a bit more uh, space and then fastify register oh yes so it's gonna do that and then then we need this fastify after which is uh, which means uh, or I think we can also use fastify uh, register here and then it's gonna be if instance uh, instance oops, uh, callback I guess we can call it done gonna do this and uh, this is gonna be our root here so I'm gonna say uh, this should be an instance right and then we should call done in the end so first of all let me just convert those functions to arrow functions because my linter complains I should probably change that it's not like it's critical but uh, it's just the style I'm used to right okay there we go um so now it's a bit more complex, but still quite simple, right? So we have this um, couple of decorators, we have a Fastify with plugin registration, and we have our roads that are declared, uh, declared as a plugin here. So still like 28 lines of code, well, not so hard. Okay, so now um, we need to, first of all, yes, first of all, we need to actually add authentication to our root here, right? So here's where we go. Uh, let's go with only one of them for the simplicity, you know, so we only want to allow users to log in using the uh, JSON web tokens. And um, now I'm just going to go to the examples I have here and copy the JWT um, logic. So here's the verify JWT logic, reply request done. And I think we are, um, ta -da -da, how do they register it? So they do... Yeah, I think they just use this basically. Yep. Okay, so we're just gonna copy this bit and uh, maybe adjust it a bit, right? So we're gonna do this, format that. I think I copied something that should not be there. There we go. Okay, so we have um, this JVT, this level. I'm not sure what is that. So basically we're gonna, yeah, we're gonna take a header called auth and if there is no header called auth, we're gonna throw an error. I'm gonna run JVT verify auth um, on verify. This is our callback. So this is gonna be error decoded. I'm gonna inline it uh, just to show you what can happen basically, right? So I'm gonna copy this bit and remove that, right? So we have a relatively simple function really. Um, I did screw something up, I think. We got this, oh, okay, level DB for users and uh, password user. Okay, we're gonna simplify that a bit more. We're not gonna use the database and I think we need the JSON web token package. This is what gonna be um, the required web token, right? So um, basically what happens in the function is we take the header uh, called auth. If there's no header called auth, we throw error immediately. If there is, we try to verify the JSON web token passed in this header. And uh, what do you not like here? Expect a return value. Yeah, okay. We can change that a bit. So if there is, if the, if there is an error decoding it or there is no user, in this case, we're gonna just check for user. 
then it's invalid, right? So very simple logic, but um, looking at this code, there's already too much, right? It's 40 lines. You can still kind of read through it and you can still kind of figure out what, what is going on, but uh, it is it is already getting complicated, right? So you might look at that and think, okay, so how can I split it? Uh, and here's where the module pattern comes in. So I think this is the most useful pattern to be um, applied within sort of Node.js world and JavaScript world in general. So since, you know, now we have uh, not only common JS modules, but ES6 modules, that is very uh, handy. So, okay, you look at this and say, okay, you know how I can probably abstract some of that into separate modules. So, right. So we look at this package, for example, at this function and see that, you know, it's actually doesn't really depend on anything external, right? So we take the, uh, we take the request, the request is a parameter. And that's actually all we use. So we could actually take this function and uh, create a new module with it, right? So it's going to be called, let's create a folder out because we're probably going to have more modules here. And uh, let's call it very verify JVT, right? And this is going to be our module exports, right? Here we go. So uh, of course we would need to move the JVT JSON web token uh, instance here. But now we have this function abstracted, which means that here we can just say require source oath verify JVT, right? There you go. That is way easier to read right now. And uh, to make it even easier, I would actually say that we properly name it const verify T. So uh, we should actually rename that. So it should be verify JVT because we are not really using level DB here. So that is kind of lying basically. Um, this this cut it down to like you know eight, 17 less or no not 17 15 less lines right and this is now way easier to read actually and now the thing is that we actually create this this hook here that protects all the roots so we cannot request slash but we don't have any roots for authentication right which means we have to do that uh, again that should be instance actually which means we need some roots for login, right? So I'm gonna do this. We're, we don't gonna add any hook. So we're gonna declare a login root. And in this case, it's gonna be get login. And you know, we're gonna send like uh, login form. I mean, I'm not gonna create a form here because there's gonna take ages for me. So I'm just gonna say, you know, we're sending a hypothetical login form here. Um, and then we need a second root, right? There's gonna be a slash login, but the post um, that will take quest reply. It will take in the data, right? So um, in this case, it should validate this data somehow and then reply send JVT, right? So I guess in this case, we can take this JSON web token here and um, so const user say, let's destruct it. So let's keep it very simple. Let's just say request body, get the user from body. And then, uh, const token is going to be JVT sign going to be user. And then, um, secret is going to be our secret B, right? Like basically whatever, because this is just an example and we send this token back. That's all we do. So nothing majorly complicated here. Uh, but now again, we have this thing that that basically um, this part and this all of this actually like the first 22 lines are kind of well, not 22, but 20 lines are kind of irrelevant to the whole Festify workflow, right? Because this is this is purely authentication. So it makes sense to create a setup file and copy all of that, right? So we're going to copy that and uh, move it over here. See, okay. So now we first of all require this verify JVD from this folder. Second of all, we don't have Fastify instance here, right? Which means that um, we need to export this. And say, okay, Fastify, and then uh, Fastify is passed in as a property. And what we can actually do is we can just return we don't actually need the whole uh, thing. So we can return Fastify, decorate it, then register. 
right? And then register um, our authentication routes. And I probably should delete this. And uh, what? Oh, I missed the semicolon here. There you go. This is our authentication setup, right? So this will actually return the new instance of Fastify, um, which will, so we're going to call it Fastify with Auth. And we're going to say, set up Auth, require a source Auth setup. Set up Auth and we're going to say Fastify. So now whenever we want to actually have um, instance of Fastify that already has a Auth, we're going to use this, right? So once again, this is now simpler. And again, this all, you know, you know exactly what happens in this line because of the way that you name the variables and the name you sort of your code flows, you know? And again, all of those files are under like 20, 30, 40 lines of code and very easy to understand. Right, so now let's imagine we declared a bunch of roots. So say we have um, we have index root and then we have, for example, we create user management, right? User roots. So say we have instance uh, get slash user ID, request reply. We do something and then we do reply send user, right? Uh, so let's say const user, some user, whatever. So it's just, I mean, again, it's a mock code. So it's not really about what we write here, but uh, how we structure that. They're going to say post, uh, I'm going to say, I guess, const user. So let's just abstract it. So let's, let's this is going to be our database, right? The users find so that users UID equals request params ID. And then in this case, user is request body. Uh, yeah, we can just distract it. And then const ID is request params. And what we do is, um, I mean, we, we don't really care about ID here. No, th this is the update, right? So what we need to do is we need to say const, uh, we need to say that users equal users uh, that should be let now then um, map you um, so if user ID equals ID we return user otherwise return you right so very stupid way of doing that uh, blah 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 okay whatever and we send back the new user data for example so um, this is the update function and we have the post function that just users concat user, right? So we just push the new user inside and then we have, for example, delete user. Then we get the um, ID again. So we're gonna get ID from params and we're gonna say users equal filter you so that you ID not equal ID, right? Um, so we have like 20 more lines that are related to users. And obviously this is a very simple case where we just use an array and just, you know, push whatever data comes to us. So there's no validation, no database communication, nothing very complicated. This already takes a lot of space. So, you know, when you open that file, it will take you some time to figure out what the hell is going on here. So that means that it's about time we create another module. So we create a folder called users and go with, okay, we're gonna go with index.js for now and just uh, copy all of that, right? So this is our main logic. We're gonna paste it here and we're gonna see, okay, so now uh, we have this instance that is not nowhere to be found, which means we need to say, okay, module exports, we take the instance um, as a parameter and we apply all of that to it, right? So this is, this is our logic, which means now we can, uh, Set up users, require source users index, right? So I guess we can omit index here. And what we do here is we do set up users, right? And pass in the instance. Once again, this, this trims the complexity significantly. So you can quite easily see that, okay, this is now, you know, this is actually users. And if you have more complicated, um, methods here, what you can do is you can obviously split them up in the files, right? So for example, get user JS, 
we take this um, get user function and uh, you, you have two options, right? So you can either copy it like this and say, okay, module exports, um, whoops, instance, you can do this, right? Uh, obviously you would need to then pass users because we don't have them here. And then you just say, okay, get users require, um, you, uh, blah, 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 get user, right? Uh, get user, that's correct. And what you do is basically you just say, get user instance users, right? The other option is obviously to only abstract this bit. So this is uh, update user, right? We're gonna say, okay, module exports, uh, but here's the problem. So we can abstract this, but we still need the access to users, which means we can actually, or we need to create a function that would return a function handling request and reply, but also providing users, which means we say users and then um, return. So I will add this additional return just to make it clear what we're actually doing, right? So you don't actually need it with our functions, but returning two functions uh, could be a bit confusing even for me. So this is a easier way. All right, uh, but that won't actually work in this case because we reassign. But when you're working with a database, that's actually, um, so we can leave it at this, I guess. So you cannot actually reassign them, right? Which is a bit of a pain. Um, okay, so in this case, this won't actually work, but um, all of the, yeah, all of those functions won't really work aside from the get. So get user will work this way. Let's do it, let's do it like this. So we're gonna, gonna uh, change it up a bit. We're gonna say that this is gonna be this kind of module, right? So instance uh, post, this is gonna be our update. And this is, I think it's gonna work, right? Gonna update user instance users. I believe it's gonna be passed by reference and it should be working, but I might be mistaken, don't take my word for it. Um, but basically, you know, you will, you almost never want to do something like this. You want to have actual database. And then in this case, we could actually have this uh, users uh, and then return this other function that actually does our work, right? Which means that get users can be applied like this. So do it this and then say get users. Uh, there you go, like this, right? So this is, there are two options. Um, whatever is best fitting, like whatever the style you like or whatever the um, style you prefer, whatever the project looks a bit better, basically, you know, if you need additional options, if you just want to have, um, I mean, in this stupid way, basically, when you don't really have um, complicated things or you don't have any like dependency injections, whatever, like we're doing here, if it's super simple and using database, for example, what you can have is just uh, something among the lines of, you know, get user, instance post uh, slash user id update user and so on and so forth right so this very simple straightforward uh list of routes that just work basically and uh this is one way of doing it obviously right so this is and uh so this 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 simple rule i think applies to almost any code you can write so in this case you know you might be like oh this is so simple and why do you explain this to us we understand this ourselves well you can actually take this principle and apply it to just about any code base out there and uh to demonstrate that we can do the same for uh react js so i am gonna i'm gonna wipe all of this because you know i don't think that it's valuable to share this code because you have to do all of this yourself to understand actually what's going on i'm gonna i'm gonna kill all of that uh rem package rem so um their source rm yarn there you go okay m is y npm install um so we're gonna yarn at next js react and react dom just for the sake of it again we got the pages, right? So let's let's try to repeat that with pages. So we got our home page, and uh, let us just go to next.js for example. Uh, whoops, next, uh, JS. Thank you very much. So three. Let's go to master branch. Um. So we're gonna take some example. I guess hello world would work. 
maybe not maybe yes we'll see okay so we got this now that's that's a bit too simplistic right so we got the index export default so we got the component so okay it's not what we want actually we want this so say we're writing okay div div hello world right we started simple we have our component we have our simple page with div it works okay let's say now we want to add bulma to it right so we go okay bulma we go to next.js and say okay how do i add headers header um there was the head component right i think it was just head yes there you go okay it's not populating head there you go so we import this head from head once again this is purely um arbitrary example essentially so this is this again applies to just about anything you can do yeah we add i think it wants react in the scope as well from react right and okay now we have a head right we have this we still have our hello we still have our hello world thing but we have a header now and which means we can go ahead and uh, integrate bulma in there so we can go here and say okay so we need this script for font awesome so i'm going to copy it and paste it here and we need a um, bulma css which is going to be this one so i'm going to copy the link tag and paste it over here right so cool now we have the page with bulma say okay now i want link right so we get the link components and uh when i import a link we're going to create a second page second page is gonna be let's say uh div div so link about for example right so let's just make an about page so okay we're gonna create an about js now but the thing is that we're gonna copy all of that and um we are retaining so we're duplicating the same code if it's just two pages it might be okay so there is nothing wrong with having some duplication within your project but when you're gonna go for the third page you're gonna see the pattern you see okay like you know i'm i'm reusing this layout all the time so we need to do something about that so what i'm gonna do is i'm gonna create a components folder right because it's a react components we're working with react components and i'm gonna create a react component called layout right I'm going to copy all of this and I'm going to say, okay, so first of all, I'm going to take children because it has a nested, it's going to have a nested stuff, right? So, and this is, this is our children here. So I'm going to remove it and say, this is going to be children, right? So we don't need link here, of course. And what that means is that we can actually, instead of doing all of this, we can just say, okay, import layout from opponents layout. And we can just say layout, right? And kill all of that. And once again, you know, if you if you notice the, whoops, that is a bit too much. Uh, you go slash save. So remove that. Copy the layout. Uh, once again, the if you notice the way that we um, abstracted it, first of all, when you see this layout name uh, from the component and in import, you know exactly that this does the layouting, right? So it creates the page layout, which means it creates the header, the wrapper. I mean, you might you might as well, you know, like do the Bulma um, wrapper, the container wrapper, right? So we can do this, for example. And this is going to be our wrapper that bootstraps everything that is that layouts our content right and this is our content so you you actually simplified once again the uh what you do um that's i i mean that's actually the very basic of it so um i'm not sure if it's worth continuing to show in that example do you guys have any uh what's the children represents in layout so okay so the uh, this is the the way you would write it if you would write it completely. So we say class layout extends React component, right? So this is the full component if we write it like this. I'm going to say render um, return. Yeah, I forgot brackets. So this was just a shorthand basically. So we got this render and uh, this children here is const children this props children this is a react prop that is 
uh, refers to anything nested within the uh, component. So basically all of this will be passed as a children. And this, what I did before was just a shorthand for this because um, when you write a function component, you actually get, uh, whoops, that is too much. So, so what you get here is props, right? So what I could have done as well could be this. So this is equivalent essentially. All right. Um, yeah, so as I'm saying, I think this is basically covers the basics and this is how I typically do that. I don't really have any other guidelines rather than, you know, can I make it simpler and can I make it easier to understand? Um, that's about all I do, I guess. And this is how I manage all my code bases. So what we could do as well is we could go to, um, we had the building products with GS, which was quite large code base, right? So we can have a look at that as well. So there is a few things here that worth noting. So there's a bunch of ways to organize your projects. Um, obviously, one way is you can just have a separate repository for each component, reusable components for client server, for deployment, whatever. Or you can have one monolithic repo, right? And there is again advantages and disadvantages to each and every one of them. So you have to basically uh, think and decide which one would work better for your project. So in this case, I don't really have any much uh, reusable stuff. So I decided to opt in for the mono wrap off with everything. We have client and server here. Uh, and client is structured more or less the same way that I showed you here. And um, aside from the fact that, you know, we're using Next.js over here. And in this case, it was just pure React.js. So we have like pages, we have the um, uh, React router for the routing here, and then Redux for Redux stuff. But the Splitting here is quite simple. So we have the store for store with all the reducers, epic sections, whatever you can imagine. Again, split into the tiny enough pieces that are easy to understand. So that, you know, when you open the root reducer, you actually see, okay, get the reducers from the reducers folder. So you can go here. You can actually check, okay, here's our reducers. Each of them comes from this file, you know, which file, okay, if we go to OAuth, there's only OAuth related stuff here and it's like 30 lines. So it's relatively easy to understand. Um, if we're talking about components, um, then again, same thing. So we uh, have minimal components with inline styles. Um, so some people, I know some people, so in this case we have the CSS, in the same folder as a component. I know that some people prefer to have CSS separately, for example, because they have like dedicated designer team works in work or not designer, I guess, uh, um, the guys who do markup. So like most, most probably designers, but yeah, theoretically should be different people doing uh, CSS and, you know, tweaking it and so on and so forth. And they want to have it separately so they can easily kind of figure out where to, what to do and where to do it. In my opinion, it's better to have all in one component because it's just easier to find stuff. Um, because, you know, like when you think, okay, notifications, so I have to go here and then there's the notification transition here. And I like you might have it as a separate, separate transitions file and then how the hell do you find it? Plus the fact that um, actually the webpack allows you to do scope CSS. So this CSS won't actually leak anywhere and be like just within this component, which is always great. Right, so we have components, we have pages. That's pretty obvious as well. So we already covered that. And yeah, I think that basically covers it. So within uh, the server, there's nothing fancy here. So we got the source, we got the utilities, we got the user stuff question DBOs. So I think as those are just uh, roots basically. And yeah, so and you see that I use the first pattern. So I have the function that wraps around the app. In this case, it's an Express.js app. And if we look at the login, for example, then, you know, I pass in this app here and app just apply, you know, whatever posts or whatever get method I want and just do whatever I want within it, right? So this is the setup I was already talking about. Um, question, so we got the, this is the user routes. I think there's only, the only different thing is DB here because this is not exactly um, express related. So I guess I should have grouped it in routes because that would make more sense, but that's still, you know, fine is simple enough. This is just the DBC uh, setup with uh, models and uh, database connection essentially. So yeah, I think that that pretty much covers it. Do you guys have any questions? 
that came out like 38 minutes i'm not even sure if it's worth summarizing because if i cut out the last five minutes of rambling we're gonna have like half an hour lecture on uh simplifying your code so there's really no magic to it just you know careful consideration of what to abstract and what to throw out essentially okay well it looks like chat doesn't really have any more questions so i guess we could just wrap this up over here even though there was a lot of stars to the proposal um that doesn't really seem to be a lot of people asking questions but i guess may maybe my explanation was good enough maybe that's the case if that's the case well then great if not well um if you're watching this on youtube once again always as always feel free to ask the questions in the comment section um yeah i guess i, I don't really think i'm gonna make a recap for that this like that came out way shorter than i expected um yeah i guess because it's quite straightforward but yeah um let's wrap it up here i guess um let me just click that and uh yeah thank you for watching and i'll see you next time bye